Is this a buffer? Yes, we've got a weak acid and it's conjugate base and they approximately have the same molarity. It's definitely a buffer. Uh, so you want to be able to identify buffers. And uh, if you're asked for the pH, you want to use the equation called the Henderson-Hasselbach pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So you'd go, in this case, pKa, you look it up in a table, I can tell you right now it's 4.74, plus the log of the base, 0.5, over the acid, 0.5. What's a log of 1? Zero. Zero. So pH is going to be equal to pKa in this example. The pH is 4.74. Now, to do when you do a more complex buffer problem, what we're going to add is we're going to say, oh, add to this buffer uh, 0 0. Uh, 0.020 molar uh, KOH. Okay. I'm adding a strong base. What part of the buffer is going to react with this strong base? The weak acid. The weak acid is going to help neutralize this uh, strong base. If I add a strong acid, the weak base would help neutralize it. So, uh, I do that, and now what I want to do, since I added a base, I'm going to write down my acid part, because you just told me the acid is going to neutralize this. Okay. So I have to write the acid is going to kick butt on this strong base. Uh, and we have water plus KC2H3O2. This is the first part of the problem called the stoichiometric or stoichiometry problem. Okay? Now, uh, how, what percent to the right does this reaction go? Is this going to go a lot to the right or a little to the right? It's actually going to go a lot. You know why? You've got a strong base. If I ever have a strong acid or a strong base in the reactants, it will go 100% to the right. Okay? Or we're approximating 100% to the right. So if you ever have a strong acid or a strong base, it will go 100% to the right. Now you fill in your stoichiometric table. Uh, oh, I need to give you the volume in order to solve this problem. Let's just say it's one liter to make our lives easier. If this is one liter, how many moles do I have of acetic acid? Yeah, 0 0.5 moles. I just multiply 1 times the molarity. How many uh, moles do I have of this? Yeah, perfect. 0 0.20. I start off with 0 and 0 of this. So again, this is called your stoichiometry, uh, stoichiometry part of the problem. You find the smaller value in the reactants and you subtract that off because that's your limiting reactant. It's zero. And you do that everywhere. So this is going to be 0.48. Now you add it to this side because it's going to react and go 100% to the right. Oh, and I made one mistake. Does anybody know where I made a mistake? Water, water, it's irrelevant. Problem. The initial concentration of this isn't zero. What is it? 0.5? Yeah. 0.5 moles. So you better add that in. Why? Because that's, that's the way, that's how it becomes a buffer. We have acid and base. What about this K here, though? doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? You're right. Yeah, who cares? Spectator ions. Or, I could say it another way, anything that's neutral, meaning the conjugate is a strong, is a spectator ion. So, ignore all spectator ions from Chem 2A. Okay, so this is not 0 0.02, it's 0 0.52. So now, you do the equilibrium part of the problem, which you could use the ice table if you prefer, but we'll use Henderson-Hasselbach because it's just easier. You take the base, 0 0.52, over the acid, 0 0.48. Uh, and pKa is going to be 4.74. Whatever that value is, that's going to be the pH. 
And you'll see the pH is not going to change much from the original, which was 4.74, because it's a buffer. So we're expecting very little change in the pH. Okay, any questions on buffers? Who do some, um, uh, when you like figure out if it's a buffer or not? Oh, is it a buffer? Yeah. Those kind of questions? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, see if I can make up some here. How about, oh boy, uh, HCl, 0 0.5 molar uh, plus Cl minus 0 0.5 molar. Is that a buffer? I have the acid and it's conjugate. Yeah, it's not weak. This is not a buffer because the original acid was not a weak acid. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, HCl and uh, ammonia. Is that a buffer? I have a weak base. But I don't have the conjugate. Okay, I need the weak base and the conjugate. This is totally ridiculous. Of course not. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's do NH3 again, 0 0.5 molar, and let's do HCl again, 0 0.25 molar. Is that a buffer? No. No. Yeah, this is one of those trick ones. You know how we like to do crazy stuff. Ammonia, let's just write this one down so you can see it. After you do a couple of these, you'll start to recognize how these work. I have a base plus, what's this? Strong, Strong acid. NH4 plus, plus Cl minus. And let's write down, I have 0 0.5 of this, 0 0.25. Oh, what percent will this go to the right? 100. 100, how do you know that? Yeah, strong acid. You have a strong acid or a strong base in the reaction will go 100% to the right. Subtract off the smaller number because it's a limiting reactant. Add the smaller number to the right-hand side. Now is it a buffer? Yes. Yeah, I have a weak base right there, 0 0.25 molar, and I have a weak acid also now, which is the conjugate of that base, which is also 0 0.25 molar. Yes, this is a buffer. That's about as tricky as it would get. And the key is, if you have a something that's weak and then something that's strong that's about half the molarity of the original one, that's going to be a buffer solution. If you're not sure, I definitely encourage you to write it out. But if you have a strong and a weak, and the strong one is a lower molarity than the weak one, it's going to end up being some sort of buffer. Okay?